Are you using Zoom for meetings while working at home? Are you or the kids using Zoom for virtual or online classes? Stay with me and I'm going to show you three ways to keep your Zoom account safe. Let's get started. Welcome to another edition of Tech Bytes with Ron Nutter, your home for all things relating to smart home technology. In this episode, we're going to talk about using two-step authentication to keep your Zoom account safe. Hi, I'm Ron Nutter, and we're going to be working on this together. This content is also available as an Amazon flash briefing or podcast. Please go to techbyteswithronnutter.com for more information. For any items mentioned in this episode, there will be affiliate links in the description. If you click on these links, I will get a small commission, but that won't affect the price you pay for the item. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please click on subscribe now and enable notifications. If this video helps you or provides value, please click on that like button, thumbs up. Now, here's what we're going to be covering. Step one is going to be creating a strong password. Now, strong password is something that you're not using on any other website or service. It's going to have a mixture of letters, numbers, punctuation where the website or service supports it. And it's not going to be something that somebody's going to be able to figure out by doing some researching on you or going online. Again, it's got to be unique. And I'm going to show you a way to make that very easy to take care of. Now, the next thing is we're going to be covering enabling two-step SMS or text messaging. You'll get a message on your phone with a six-digit code that's going to change approximately every 30 seconds. That's one way. Another way is we're going to be using a soft token or software app either on your smartphone or on your desktop. Again, let's make this easy, but we want to make sure that you have as many safeguards on your account as possible. So. That's the three things we're going to cover. Let's move on to the first step and show you how to get a really strong password. Now, I don't know about you, but creating a unique password, one that's strong, is not one of the things that's at the top of my hit parade list. But we've got some options, or at least I'm going to show you one anyway, of how to make that as painless as possible. So I'm going to switch over here to my Samsung smartphone and I'm using a password manager called Bitwarden. There are several out there to choose from. This just happens to be the one that I'm using and I've done some other videos with it and you'll be able to see some advantages that it has for you. Really very straightforward. And you can also do it from a desktop app and I even believe they've got a browser plugin. Again, this makes it very straightforward. Now, when you're going through and filling out the form, when you get down to the password field, you can either enter it with the keyboard and then as you're doing it, it's going to blank out as you go to keep some, if in case somebody's looking over your shoulder. Now, if you want to make sure what you've entered, then you can just click the little eye icon and it takes away all that. So that is one way to do it. Now, if you're, if you want to make sure you don't get in the rut to using the same password every time, or variations that are easy to guess, here's the way to do it within Bitwarden. If you click on the little, what looks like the refresh icon, it will bring you into its password manager. And you see, you've got a whole host of options to deal with here. So by default, it will give you capital, lowercase, numbers. Now, the reason that this fourth option, and you will see some websites or services call it special characters. Well, I disagree. That's punctuation for the most part. Now, if you have a website and that will support punctuation, special characters, whatever you want to call it, then by all means, turn that on because that's adding a layer of complexity to it. Now, you're going to hear the process of guessing passwords. You may hear the term dictionary attack. Now, that is something where somebody can go in and literally they could or tax that can be run where they will have every word that's in a dictionary in a file and the password cracking program will repeatedly will try the first option then the next option and it will go through its whole list and sometimes things can be easily gathered especially say if you're in a city like here in the midwest kansas city has got uh, a football team kansas city chiefs you don't want to guess how many people are using chiefs as their password so what you do is you go in here and you can say, I want to have a certain number of numbers, a certain number of special characters. Now, when it says avoid ambiguous characters, 
the one problem I run into with passwords is if you have the letter L in lowercase and the number one, depending on the font that you use, that is going to be a challenge. You're going to have some password failures because you're going to type in what you think is one, but it actually was an L. So that's the reason you want to, or zero and the letter O, or capital O, really. So that's an area where you want to avoid that. So once you have that, then you can just go regenerate password and you can select copy password and we'll select and it's already got that filled in. So if we tap in the little eye icon, then you see it's already there. So you can't make it much simpler than that. And you can also click the check mark just to make sure that the password has not been found in any security breaches. Again, another layer of keeping things on the safe side. So that's the foundational piece. That's the most probably critical piece of creating an online account credential is having a good password. You've seen how to do it. Really, it can't be any easier than that. You may come up with your own patterns. Again, that's totally up to you. But this is a way where you can have Bitwarden or whatever your password manager is do that to help you. Now, some websites will suggest a password, but then you still got to get the thing copied into your password manager. So again, if you have password manager do it, then it's one less thing you got to worry about. Okay, so we've created step one. Now we're going to go over and move to setting up a two-step authentication message with SMS. Now you'll hear two-step, you'll hear two-factor. Basically, it's taking, you put your username and password in, and then the second step, which is going to be something you know, you will enter in a six-digit code that comes in over your phone, and you'll type that in, and that just is another layer of protection. Is it totally foolproof? I'm not going to tell you it is. But it's adding enough layers of protection that any would-be hacker is going to move on to the next source. So let's switch over to that. Now we'll go in here and I'm going to move into this screen. I'm actually move over to my uh, PC so that we can make this a little easier. We will go down where it says two factor authentication and we will click on turn on. Now it's going to ask for the password, which is fine. And we will click that because I've already got stored. And again, storing password, generally not a good thing unless it's a computer you have sole control over and it's stored protective because this is at, this is taking away the very protection that you're putting in. So we'll click on next. So we've got two different options. We're going to go with SMS first. So we'll click on setup. Okay, one more try here. Apparently I did hit the dash and didn't realize it. So if we enter in the phone number and no dashes, and that's what it was complaining about. And we will click on send code. Okay, now we'll click send code. And we should get a message. And let's switch over to the screen here so you can see the last one I got was, and see it's zero, nine four eight four nine so we'll click on the first box here zero nine four eight four nine and we'll click on verify all right so it took that so we've got that set up and this is something you these are one-time use codes say for some reason your phone battery dies you can't get into the password manager. These are codes you can use one time for each code. And these need to be somewhere where you can always get to them or they really are not going to help you. So you can download, print it. So obviously you got to do one. So we will click download and I will go get those later and click done. And see, when, once you get down here, you will see you can always view the codes. So that is never uh, a problem in case you don't have them get don't have them right at hand all right so now say you don't want to do that and you want to do sms instead so let's first we have to enter the password in to make that change all right now we will go here 
And again, it is the password. This is probably the worst part of setting up two-step authentication is having to enter this again and again. But you know what? I can get over that one. Now, here is something to you'll need to stop and think about. Number one, if you've never set up two-step authentication before, you're going to want to get the QR code scan. Now, this QR code is unique to your account and take a picture of your smartphone, file it in Google Keep, whatever you're using from some sort of uh, saving system so where you can get back to this, whether it's OneNote, Evernote, just mainly is get it to where you can keep it. You can scan this with your smartphone. Or if you're not doing it from a smartphone and you are instead doing this with your desktop, you can click on use something other than QR code and the secret key is what you will put in. So we're going to go back to scanning it with QR code and I've got my app right up here and let's make this change and we will go back to my test accounts and then we will go down here to zoom and I will edit And this is the screen that, that I'm actually seeing. I'm sorry, I should have shifted over to that earlier. And what I will do is I will tap on the camera. But if I do that and don't have the screen in place, then it's going to do weird things. Okay, now I've got that set up. And if we go back into here, and Bitwarden just closed on me, and we will go back in here, and then you will be able to see what we're going to look at and it didn't do it right. Okay. Let's go back here. Uh, we will tap the little camera again and okay. It captured it. Now this is what you're going to see in the password manager. It's going to have this whole long path again, not anything you need to worry about, but I'll tap save. And through the magic of technology, now you're going to see this is the code that changes every 30 seconds. So now that we've got that, we can switch over to our desktop and let's click next. And it's going to ask us to enter in the code to verify that everything synced up right. 034689. And we will click verify. Okay, it's happy. That's great. So you can possibly have both up at the same, both SMS and the authentication app again. So now it's going to send me another text message. And we'll see right here. So it's 293252. So 293252. And verify. Okay, it's happy. So now this, as they say, is where the rubber is going to hit the road and we're going to test all this. So let's shift back and we'll give it another good old college try. So I will go here and we'll click on my name and select sign out. Okay, now we will click sign in and we will enter that and it's got the password in place from what I've told it to save and we'll say not stay signed in because we want to make sure if somebody comes in that they're not doing something they shouldn't okay now by default in this case it's going to use the two-factor token on the screen so that's fine now if for some reason you don't want to do that then you can click over here and get code by SMS. So since we've already got that set up to do the soft token, then I'll go down here, pick up the number, and you'll, as you notice, the, the counter decrement 086002, and we will click verify. Okay, we're in. Now, what you, what I started to get to, and we need to kind of have a little little conversation about this is you notice the decrement encounter depending on how close the clock is on either your desktop if you're using a desktop password manager or on your smartphone 
there is something called clock slip you may run into. And that's where the time that you're on may be a little off, sometimes a few seconds, sometimes it could be a couple of minutes. That's going to give two-step or two-factor authentication a little bit of heartburn. So the rule of thumb I follow is when you are seeing the, the counter, when it gets down to about three, I probably wouldn't use it. Or if it's, it hasn't gotten to about 28, probably wouldn't use it. This is going to be some experimentation that you're going to have to, to go through to figure out what's going to be the best for you. Again, it, it, there's no one right or wrong way to do it, but this will get you started. So we've talked about setting up a strong password, enabling two-step SMS or soft token. So you've got three different things and, you'll, and you can do all three if you want to. Again, the more you do is going to keep your accounts safe for you or if your kids are doing online school because of the current situation. Again, it's that much more protection that you've got in place. Now, if you're watching this on YouTube, you're going to see videos to, on the screen to the right or to the left of what you're watching right now or under content that YouTube thinks you might be interested in. If this video helps you or provides value, please click on the like button, thumbs up. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please click on subscribe and enable notifications. We'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.